Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl has one of the most interesting stories within the fighting game community. A game praised and hyped by a massive amount of people, only to be abandoned by the masses after launch. I am here to try to answer this dilemma once and for all. All-Star Brawl was announced around July with an announcement trailer with a lot of excitement. One of the biggest games was going to be getting their last update on October 18th, 2021. This is already setting the game up to fail, but I will get into the reason why that is in a moment. During this time, not a lot of people were talking about this game. It wasn't until the roster was released when more people were talking about the game, uh, when reviews copies were being given out, when the, they were playtesting it, they were making videos about this game. Right at this time was when the game had a huge amount of hype uh, on the internet. It was, it was crazy. Uh, people were so excited, in fact, that they were even making jokes. That's crazy, right? Everything was slated to be perfect as the game released on October 5th, 2021. The game got its first tournament hosted by Hungrybox, a Smash Bros. professional <laughs> and streamer. And as I watched this tournament, I was very hyped. This was so much fun to watch and everyone was doing the pog champs and the omega lols in the chat. A fantastic showing of what the game can be at its peak, showing how exciting the game can be to watch. And after that, another tournament happened and there was already an issue by this tournament. So people found out the most broken character in the game at this point, and this character was named Michelangelo. So how it worked was really, really easy. You grabbed a character, and then you upthrowed the character, and then you neutral add them to the other side of the map and win. Oh my god, the re-grabs? That's it! Husky with the first one again. Basically, the character had an incredibly abusive infinite, and was not banned for the tournament. And this definitely left a bad taste, showing everyone how not fun it can be when there was an issue. Hungrybox's reasoning was that he was hoping that they would just get destroyed by the other players who are better than this exploit. It's almost like you should have banned him. Again, I wanted to see if someone could, 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 uh, could defeat him. They've lost games, it hasn't, hasn't been. There it is. Which didn't end up happening, and there ended up being two Michelangelos at the end of the tournament. Hey, Editor Dalton here. I just wanted to make a disclaimer uh, about my reasoning uh, behind this whole part here. Because uh, it does sound like I'm going off on Hungrybox. It's not his fault. The exact same thing happened when Meta Knight Editor was completely Dalton broken. Too. Uh, I just Smash wanted to Bros. say Brawl. that I also he saw how quickly uh, this that competitive scene uh, died. No part uh, so I'm just trying to give uh, an example. Of I just wanted to just say something that like this, uh, even though that happened, yes, technically is Meta also Knight could be possibly to a reason why the downfall. Uh, of yeah, Smash I think this is a downfall. Uh, there was a lot of three or four game in general, even though it did also get. Completely that, fixed, uh, which yes, is good. wobbling. Die, hey, well, is something that did happen, but it did not play. Play. It, it, it happened right, yeah, right, around, the right around, around the East. East. And sadly, and sadly, like, sadly this is happened something that was yes, yes, banned, uh, but Meta Knight could be contributed to. Throwing it in there, top two, even when on any way, this is about like I the character that had been had an infinite after the event, which should be most people consider really thought that how I see this game more, but it's just so there's actually said that they did. It was banned pretty much, unless. So, so I can't I have necessarily to really say that as an organizer or whatever, but, but um, true. most yeah, of them, I'm uh, pretty sure what I will say uh, is that the, uh, um, I'm not the one to go off on Hungry Box so. or anything, and uh, uh, I don't yeah, stand by anything yeah. I say whatsoever other than, um, uh, I don't know. Meanwhile, the normals, who knew these 90s cartoon characters being in the game altogether, gave it a shot. Well, it did not turn out so well. Uh, and then, the Smash Bros. community, uh, just stopped talking about the game, and then the final update for Smash Bros. came out, and then everyone stopped talking about it. The only people who were left, uh, were the people who disliked the game. Hmm. Editor Dodson 64 here. It's all good, I got pizza now, so. Everything's right in the world.
And here we are, almost a year and two new characters later, and what exactly happened within this small time span? There are a lot of details I left out purposefully, which we will dive into each one. So to start with what the biggest problems were with the game is with the complaints about what the game lacked and with the price the publisher was asking for. People may not know this, but the publisher has more to say in how a game is going to be marketed and designed. Nick Allstar was just another budget title Nick was pushing out, just like a prior game that no one talks about called Nickelodeon Kart Racers 2 Grand Prix, developed by a different company in October 6th of 2020. Notice a pattern? And the third in the series is releasing this year on October 7th, 2022. Nick All-Star Brawl was just another game they were releasing. They didn't care what it was, and they just wanted a product done and over with by the due date. So the game most likely had a very low budget to begin with, and developers had a very tight schedule. This game had no choice other than to be what it was as it launched. So what were the complaints when it released? High price like I mentioned, lack of content like I mentioned, no voice acting, hard to tell who is who if you are playing dittos, lack of distinguishable music tracks, and lack of good levels that could be played at a tournament level. The online lobby was buggy when it came to playing privately and whatever else you can nitpick about. Let's just say people wanted everything Smash Bros had plus $10 and a Switch. I completely understand these complaints. All of this was entirely the publisher's fault, not the developers. They did what they could with what they were given, and they still are working on it. But this is not the only issue surrounding the game. Also, I just want to mention before I move on to what I'm about to say, I would like to point out that this is entirely speculative as I do not work at Ludosity, so there is no way for me to know whose fault it is. Just an assumption, as publishers most likely have no idea what Smash Bros is other than what they saw their siblings or family members playing or something. It is also the developer's fault for focusing on making the gameplay try to appeal to specifically the Smash Bros Ultimate and Melee community. They completely did not realize how much of a mistake this was going to end up affecting the game's population in the long run. While yes, they did this with Slap City's gameplay, as it is all designed around Melee's gameplay, but the majority of the Smash Bros community doesn't play Slap City. Slap City, at the time of writing, has six players playing the game on Steam, with a 24-hour peak of 11 players. Even though Slap City got more praise than Nick All-Stars, the community ultimately ignored the gameplay despite the gameplay basically being Slap City's gameplay. No one had complaints about that aspect from the Melee's community. The Ultimate's community was a different story, being made up of people who found the gameplay confusing or not as good as Ultimate, directly comparing the two like they are on the same level. That's the problem. Three types of standard matches, training, a single player arcade mode, online play, and that's it. It's a stark contrast to how much Smash has going on with each new entry. And while I didn't expect a smaller team, the normals who are not into fighting games. Uh, plays Ultimate because it's the most recent, most sold in the series, and their kids have it on their Switch, uh, played played Nick All-Stars with confusion. I swear, it's not the shit on Angry Joe, uh, Angry Joe show, but you can tell him and his friends are not very good at understanding how the gameplay works, because it's not like Smash Bros. Although Joe did say he liked it, and can see what makes it interesting. <laughs> oh what? <laughs> he picked you up with your clap. What did you guys think of it, Zero Flippy? Yeah, what did you guys think? Um, uh. obviously, you know, it's a lot of uh, obviously it's a lot of fun with um, you know, friends and and everything and. Obviously, I think because we're on Twitch and everything, we can get chat involved, mm -hmm. we can make predictions, and obviously that's a lot of fun, yeah, but that's a lot obviously of fun like for its that. price tag, it's just way too overpriced for what it is. Um, obviously not finished, but 
Yeah, like if it's on sale, if you can pick it up for like, I don't know, 15 or something, you just want to, you know, play with your friends sometimes, then yeah, I mean, go for it, but definitely not at the price now. Uh, for, for me, I don't think there's probably like a buy a game at, at the current price it is, even though it's like 20% off, because there's a lot, a lot of features missing here. Like, mm -hmm. we can't even uh, pick which teams that we are. That's like a huge thing. There's yeah, when you do 2v2, you can't pick who you want to be with. Yeah, there's a, a, a whole bunch of features that are missing that it's like a must have to, to even have in the game. And they're saying that they're going to add voice lines after the fact when they people probably them. are going to lose interest in it. Yeah. No, that's if they do really, really well and in future games. <laughs> But, uh, oh, yeah. but if they started strong, then... <laughs> well, I don't know. Uh, I would say, like, even with, like, the whole tw uh, Twitch, uh, uh, them uh, watching us play and doing the predictions, we can easily do that with, like, more funner games, like, on the, on the Nintendo games. Like, mm -hmm. uh, what is this? Copies off of Smash, Mario Kart, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. They do it way better with more polish than this game has. If I was going to pick one or the other, I would probably go with uh, Smash. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Joe, what do you think? I would definitely wait for a sell. This is like bare. It's just gameplay. It's missing a lot of things. The four modes that it has are basically the same thing. Just yeah, the sports. They're all just because like, oh, this different is a football. Ball. Throw it in the star. Oh, this yeah. is a little soccer ball. Throw it in the fucking star. The Tommy ball, yarn ball. Throw them in the fucking star. So <laughs> it's the same mode. Uh, it is. I like it a little better, than you I guys. Expect. I think that it, it is the core gameplay, as they say, is fun. The animations are funny. The move sets are really fun. Uh, but everything else is just as they said. It's bare bones, the video game. Uh, it's there's lack. I can't believe you get all these licenses and you don't at least have one or two lines from each of the characters. So yeah, uh, if you're a fan of Smash Brothers, you're gonna like it because it's a it's a new Smash, right? With uh, nostalgic characters. It depends on how nostalgic you are for these characters and how fun you find your particular main and finding who you're best with. The problem is that these Nick characters aren't video game characters, and you do not know what they can do. So, when someone dies with a character, because of a character with a bad recovery, they get easily upset. Also, with the gameplay being complex right off the bat, and the character's moves being very different from what Smash Bros. players are used to, a lot of people are easily put off by it. And by the time it would take you to get used to the controls, people just dropped it. That was a lot. There are a lot of layers to why this game failed, like I said. The next biggest issue, which I have mentioned a couple times, was ultimately the Smash community and everything around it. The game was advertised with the Smash Bros community in mind. The game was given early to Smash Bros professionals. The game was talked about by the Smash Bros community. The game's tournaments were run by the Smash Bros community. The entire player base that was there at launch were mostly Smash Bros players. The game died because the community had something to do while they waited for Ultimate's final update to release in two weeks. Then as soon as this happened, that's when the players dropped they got bored of it and they went back to their games. I think that this was the killing blow, was the community gave up on it because it wasn't Smash Bros and could not compare to their game and ultimately went back to their regularly scheduled program. Nick All-Star is a really great game when you look under the hood at its pure focus on gameplay first. Like I said, when the game came out, People would compare it to Smash Ultimate, a franchise that has had years of development, multiple sequels dating back to 1999, with tons of programmers, art designers, and an entire team. Ludosity has about six people working on the game. With what they were able to put out, I think they succeeded at making a great successor to Slap City, whether it was their goal or not. Give them time, if they ever get a chance to make a sequel, Here's the hoping it becomes bigger than the last, because I know Sakurai did when he went on to make Smash Bros. Melee and Ultimate. If I had any final thoughts, it really bums me out that Nick had the audacity to charge people $5 for the characters and maps. 
if you're charging players fifty dollars for this budget title give it free updates for christ's sake and to the smash community take the dildo <laughs> and to the smash community take the dildo out of your ass and stop being a prick I hope that Nick All-Stars community can one day thrive, although with how it is viewed by the people and the price point never going down, I doubt it will. I know that's a harsh way to put it, but I'm being honest. With the current flow of things, it is going to be outshined by the other platformers due to the fact that players seem more interested in free-to-play live service games. Uh, maybe I will do a video one day about multiverses and why that game seems to have succeeded as of the writing of the script. Uh, it has 24 hour peak of about 43,000 players. Anyways, please feel free to complain in the comments on your thoughts and why I am wrong. This was kind of like a short, random uh, video essay. I, I keep seeing people bring the game up constantly, and it's just like the people give it a, a harsh critique uh, pretty easily. Because it's like, you look, at, you look at Slap City, and you see people constantly praising it. People do praise it, but they don't play it. <laughs> And then they complain, they go on the complain about Nick All-Stars, and they they give it shit for pretty much the same exact gameplay as Slap City. Uh, it's, it's pretty obvious that there's a huge amount of bias for some reason against this game. I don't know why, I, I just assume that people... I, I assume that people want something better? I Like, it's not the developer's fault. Like I mentioned, it's not their fault. They were given with what they were given, and there, there's, there's only six of them in the team. Uh, they can only do so much, and obviously with how slow updates are to the game, it's only causing more people to leave the game as time goes on. Uh, the, the game takes a while to get updated. The DLCs for the new characters uh, cost like five dollars if you get like the bundle where it has both of the characters kind of like a season pass It's about twelve dollars, which to be fair is a little bit better uh, So if you want to get that then go ahead, but from personal experience I Enjoyed this game a lot uh, when I had somebody I was playing with I we played it for hours We pretty much played it for an entire day it was, it was a lot of fun when you even have just one person to play with. It's it's great, especially when you both can be pretty good at it. Uh, and the updates to like the characters were really helpful, like uh, Patrick being buffed. Patrick was so much fun whenever he got buffed. There, there's a lot of good things about the game if you just focus on the gameplay. Because to me... I'm not a huge- I don't have a huge problem with the price point of $50 because I was easily able to put in 50 hours into the game, uh, just by the gameplay alone. Uh, I didn't need to play the campaign or the mini games. I didn't need to have a bunch of stuff in my game, although I do think it doesn't deserve to be $50. There's no way of changing that. Uh, maybe one day there will be like a really good sale and if it's on a really good sale I would purchase the game because it is really fun if you can get uh, friends together and play it and they understand that it's not Smash Bros. It plays different from Smash Bros. It has aspects that are similar but it's different and once you understand that uh, you, you can really understand how fun it can be but you have to just not be an idiot <laughs> and understand how the gameplay plays because it, it is definitely different from Smash Bros, which I like. I think that's what makes it different from the other platforming games like uh, like Multiverses, like, uh, like I guess PlayStation All-Stars, <laughs> which no one talks about, but that was another one that was a platform fighter that <laughs> also was not that good uh but 
that honestly playstation all-stars is more similar to multiverses now than playstation all-stars was i it's interesting i don't know i i can definitely see huge amounts of similarities with how there's leveling up for every character you can level them up to get different stuff going on uh that's just like multiverses so i can definitely tell there is a little bit of uh of similarities with playstation all-stars for that the difference being that that's free to play and it's in the post fortnite reality where you have these free to play live service games like fortnite uh and everybody will it, that's more easily can get a bunch of players on it although there is a really good example of a bad game that is also free to play but also doesn't have the numbers that it should have uh one halo infinite's multiplayer has a play ah shoot <sighs> halo infinite's multiplayer has about 4,000 players right now 4,000 and then the 24 hour peak of about almost 6,000 so this is a really good example of a game that can fail as a free-to-play market system. And that's entirely due to the community within Halo Infinite. That doesn't uh, imply that the Xbox version is the same. The Steam version, there's about 4,000, which is way, way, way lower than it was when I was playing towards around the launch period. Uh... But yeah, that's the end of this. I just wanted to ramble on a little bit after I finished the script. Uh, it's a little bit of a botched script, but I just wanted to get the word out there. I think that the game deserves better, definitely, than it's being treated. And that's... I, I read on Twitter, there was people... There, there was a really good Twitter post out there of somebody talking about their experience with trying to play this game. Because there isn't really a convention for these kinds of games right now. Uh, and Nick All-Stars is sadly bundled within the Smash Bros. community uh, at these at these events. So like SmashCon or something, they get a small little section that was dedicated to uh, Nick All-Stars players. And they also did their tournaments at like these um, Smash Bros. orientated tournaments so they they have they have not been treated well at all by the smash community and a lot of people will share their sentiments towards the com uh the competitive scene so I, I i do hope that it gets better i i i definitely don't think you should blame uh smash bros commentators or streamers for the downfall of the game it's not their fault it's the smash bros community the people who aren't the people talking are the people who are not interested in the game at all they they don't feel they uh, the smash bros community like i said are definitely the main issue but it's also the developers who orientated towards that community which was if you think about it in retrospect it wasn't a good choice because these smash bros players are just going to go back to their game uh, after they get bored and they did they definitely did and it shows it does have more players currently smash uh nick all stars has more players than slap city but that's because it's a recognizable ip uh, it has more people kind of in it and whenever someone mentions it some people may be interested in popping back on uh when they released hue i, I there was a resurgence in some players as well so there is a small community of it. It's just there. It, it's uh, it's up to us to make the game populated, and a lot of people don't feel the need to do so because they're not as interested, and they don't have friends who are interested either. Despite the game being on Switch and also being on Steam, uh, but whatever, I guess you know just. It's just a it's just another platform fighter it's never gonna be as good and then people were giving uh shit talking uh nick all stars when multiverses was coming out then people had to defend the game again uh and it's just like it, it, 
Nick All Stars definitely does not get any kind of praise. It seems it seems it's just either defended but not praised. It's defended but not praised. That's probably the best way to describe the current state of the game is that people don't want to play it. And I guess that's due to lack of content in the game for people to have like something like, you know, Smash Ultimate having about like 50 characters or something. So like they always have like, ooh, ooh, touchy candy, ooh, ooh, yum kind of stuff, right? Anyways, that's it.